Good day, everyone. Today, I've got Ian with me again, and today we'll be covering the October electionals. And for this sneak peek version, you'll be gaining access to two out of the six charts that me and Ian have collectively gathered as so-called auspicious dates. But first and foremost, we'll just like to cover the overall astral weather for the month of October. So good day, Ian. Good day, everyone. You know, making my entrance here. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I had to do it. But um, yeah, good to, good to be here. Good to take a look at this October month. We have a lot of a lot of activities, in my opinion, a lot of things to discuss. And um, I don't know, let's, I guess, jump in. Yeah. Let's, here. let's see what the are well. the key dates that I've noted down for October in mm. terms of uh, weather, uh, astral weather changes. Let's go. And 6th of October, mm. we actually have a new moon in Libra at 13 degrees ish. And when we talk about a new moon in Libra, new moons are actually very good for setting intentions and sowing the seeds. So you may use this uh, new moon to actually um, start seeding intentions for projects that involve harmo harmonious agreements within partnerships, because that's what the sign of Libra is about. And coincidentally, over this new over this new moon in Libra, Pluto will be stationed direct. So at the bottom of the chart, as you can see from the screen, uh, mm. there's a, a red color S for for Pluto, oh. it, which means that Pluto is um, literally in the skylight, is optically appearing as station, preparing to switch direction. But as with any outer planets that's um, changing directions, we'll probably start feeling it uh, as we start off uh, October itself. Because I usually give it like plus minus one week or slightly more when the motion of outer planets starts slowing down uh, in, in preparation to change direction. And when we talk about Pluto that's stationed direct in the sign of Capricorn, it's really about reinforcing and empowering your plans for, achieve, for uh, achieving long-term results um, so that you can ensure their ability to overcome challenges. So during the whole time whereby Pluto was retrograde, uh, you may be making some changes to your plans so that it can really uh, withstand uh, future stresses. So when we move one day forward uh, to 7th it, of October. Can, I, can yeah. I say a little bit of bis, bits and pieces here? Because I wanted to mention a couple of things with Pluto coming out of retrograde. And this is what I've observed really often is, is there's wherever it is in your personal chart, um, housewise, we're talking about a cleansing. Uh, so mm -hmm. there's be prepared for that, those kind of cleansings, to come about usually like Donnie said that the week before maybe like two or three days after as yeah. well quite intense stuff especially remember this is Pluto you know extremes so those cleansingness is you know aren't always the most comfortable they aren't always as like you can see them you know maybe you can he see hints of them coming but they can come like fruit you know um, almost like a shocking uh, in a shocking manner as well. Actually, you know what? I'll probably give it like plus minus two weeks. So we'll probably start feeling the Pluto slowing down to station retrograde even as early as late September. Yeah. I, I, I most often agree. I just I see, you know, the, the most uh, intense activities or, or happenings usually happen around when it's stations direct or... or or, or even a little bit before, or a little bit after. See, this is like the most things happen during that, and especially with the new moon. You know, with the with the, you know, in my mind, quite an active new moon with with the sun, Mars in Libra, cardinal sign. Again, remember activity. So there's going to be a bunch of activities um, happening there, and 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 things things coming to the surface is Pluto. 
literally things that have, have been simmering kind of during the whole retrograde because Pluto is retrograde so much they've been simmering for a long time and Pluto takes a long time so now they're coming now they're coming to the surface yeah Seven. also the ruler of uh, Pluto which is Saturn uh, is also the next planet to be stationed direct so mm -hmm. it's like you can see this we are already kind of like exposing October's energy bit by bit. And it's like, there's a whole um, switch of energies that's going on because not one, not two, not three, but four. Oh yeah. Planets are changing directions in the month of uh, October itself. And um, there will be like a major shift in terms of uh, energy because we've been, we've been going through the past few months with uh, um, I think Mercury is the latest planet to join the retrograde list. Uh, we used to have six and Mercury just uh, uh, begin its retrograde 27th of uh, September. And so six plus one, seven planets retrograde. <laughs> I can see how like for the, it's almost like an inner pressure cooker that's waiting to be released. And in October, we actually find the outlet it's almost like you're, you're trying to pressure cooker something in Easter pot or something. And then in October, like the steam gets released from that valve, you can see all the steam just kind of brush out and, you know, you're not trying to burn your hands and all that. <laughs> yeah, I, th I, I love that, that analogy, actually. I think, I think it's when, whenever there's a retrograde, so many retrogrades happening at once, it's like, it's, it almost seems like things are going backwards. And you're like, why aren't they're they? are trying to rework something. Yeah, we're trying to like go back and revisit and try to digest whatever that has gone before us. Because a lot of things yeah. have happened in 2021. Yeah, yeah and, 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 it's, and it's kind of personal, from a personal perspective, there can be like this internal pressure. Why aren't things moving? Like I want them to move. I want them to go forward. And now, you know, um, in October, <laughs> I <Yeah>. think we will, <laughs> we will get that <laughs> opportunity or chance to, yeah. for things to start moving forward. And um, one thing to note as well, like um, uh, Pluto's ruler, which is Saturn, is already getting prepared to station direct in another 72 hours from uh, 72 to 96 hours from 6th of October. So you can like Pluto and Saturn together, that's mm -hmm. going to change direction pretty like within, within a span of seven days or within seven days apart so you can see we are trying to um get ready to lay new foundations or at least act on those things that we've refined or um, totally change or revamp um it can be plans it can be investments it can be uh um other life structures that we've been trying to pivot towards for the past few months. Maybe is that uh, you've been thinking for the past few months that you want to change your job, but you haven't got the guts to. <laughs> Can be one of the manifestation. And then when Pluto and Saturn both change direction back to back within, within that week, maybe that's when you have the realization that I have to act now. It's almost like this urgency comes up for people. For sure. And I, I would like to say a couple of things about uh, Saturn coming out of retrograde because Saturn is a lot to do with, for me, and I've seen it so much happening all around me as well. It's, it's a lot to do with material things manifesting and, and mm. the efforts we put in. And it's super, like, uh, I've been kind of hammering it in every video I've done about Saturn retrograde. It's, it's, it's like, it's really almost hard to be vigilant and put those material grind efforts in during the retrograde but the more you still do it the more you still kind of like nitty bitty every day a little bit of effort kind of like practical hands-on effort into the things wherever saturn is retrograde in your chart whenever you put that effort still in whenever saturn comes out of retrograde this is the, the time to kind of start reaping those rewards as well and so starting to kind of 
you know, when, whenever we're talking about Saturday, it's kind of like not jubilant uh, rewards, but it's like more like, mm, like, yeah, I thought did this and now I can kind of see these things coming together. But it's still like material manifestation. It's it's not always joyous, but it's it's you will still see um, the kind of uh, the reward. Let's say the rewards. Let's say, let's say, let's put it like that. Actually, Saturn right. is the only planet I wish it would retrograde longer. <laughs> because the thing is that outer limitations are inverse into inner limitations, which I feel that is easier to work through rather than outer mm. limitations. Because when I think about Saturn, like turning direct in Aquarius, uh, it actually happens on the 10th of October. Uh, the struggle to plan for changing times actually continues. And it brings about, but it also brings upon important innovations because it happens in the sign of Aquarius uh, that will serve our future pretty well. So it's like a double-edged sword when Saturn actually is a direct motion, the limitations come from external um, situations in which you have to navigate rather than when it was retrograde, when it's mostly on the internal um, levels that you're working through. And, yeah, I like that. I, I just a couple of things that I've been kind of observing and I think we'll, we will see more than so, some of you who are you know, into the markets and into maybe crypto and, and, you know, even societally in general, whenever Saturn comes out of it, it's usually some sort of regulations yeah. um, start to become more <laughs> concrete and they come out of some, some sort of hidden. It's kind of like the, uh, the preparations for these uh, limitations, restrictions, or, or um, what's the word I'm looking for? Can't remember. Anyway, uh, regulations. <laughs> yeah, regulations. Limitations, so, so reg all that, that yeah. like blockages. Yeah. Those will usually be revealed around the time, like Donnie mentioned, the 10th of October. The, the, the time Saturn is in shadow or, you know, when it's coming out of retrograde. Usually big news, big th things coming again um, revealed to us. So I expect a lot of that to be in markets you know maybe some restrictions for a movement again and and uh the cryptocurrency the regulations i i do see a lot happening there and then since saturn rules over uh the sign of capricorn where pluto actually sits so it's coming from uh governmental powers in terms nice. of regulations yeah. Yeah, yeah and all that so uh shall we move on to mm -hmm slightly maybe a few hours later on the 7th of october you uh let's see mm. oh. one more oh. yes because on the 7th of october mm. um, venus actually enters sagittarius oh yeah oh yeah and finally <laughs> <laughs> uh so much brighter days I hope, because like whatever Venus is in, we kind we are able to magnet magnetically attract that more into our lives. Um, that's why Venus actually rules the metal copper because it is conductive and is able to pull in, um, uh, or at least you gravitate towards certain experiences, and it's in a sign of Sagittarius, and so it's the time to fall in love with positivity, optimism new prospects that's coming for you and uh, just everything that makes your life more adventurous uh, that you're gonna embark on yeah so just like i'm really glad that venus is is coming to sagittarius out of kind of um scorpio you know it wasn't really that amazing you know with the saturn also squaring venus Kind of battered all around, you know, <laughs> not doing that well. Well, and last month for September's uh, astro weather, we did say that um, Venus and Mars up till 6th of October uh, will be a mutual deception. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so Venus is like shaking it off from the dark, deep waters of Scorpio into somewhere whereby it can explore more. Hopefully, uh, hopefully in brighter days. 
yeah uh what did i want to say about this <laughs> i had some oh yeah i mean now when when venus is in in sagittarius we're now actually the aspects change as well for venus or the venus what what aspect it's making so right now both sides we're getting sextiles to venus so that's already going to get a lot easier kind of relief for us in in relationships and you know you know the the sagittarius uh venus can be you know quite adventurous in relationships it's not you know only um i would say only like super positive but it's it's um in, in the way of of like let's say we're talking about monogamous relationships otherwise it's it's quite very positive but now i like the way saturn is coming in or the the venus and saturn are forming the sextile as well so saturn will kind of dial it down actually dial that kind of adventurism down and make bring that kind of like more grounded approach to relationships so i, I kind of like uh, like that uh, in this month specific and also the signs of sagittarius and aquarius where saturn and jupiter is uh, in which venus will form sextiles one by one with both are actually pretty idealistic signs so maybe um in october new um, value systems and beliefs that's that's uh that's more in line or aligned with your new ideals will be first mm. so. but one other thing in, along these lines is it's also, I think, when I was looking at doing kind of research or preparing for this month, I was, I was seeing because both, like you, Tony said, Aquarius and Sagittarius are kind of idealistic. And they're also kind of like looking into the future, looking for the big picture. So, and remember, guys, uh, we still have the Libra uh, stellium going on as well. So again, sextiles, all about relationships. October, generally, Libra is in any way about relationships. So in my mind, also good time to do kind of like, let's say big uh, picture planning in your relationships as well. Don't be too afraid to explore. Sagittarius is about exploration, it's about exploring okay. the bigger field and, and it's also about visions. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got planets in Libra, Venus in Sagittarius, and you got uh, uh, Jupiter and Saturn in Aquarius. Uh, these three signs are what I call a minor grand trine. So it's like Libra trine Aquarius and both sextile uh, to what is in um, mm. Sagittarius. So it's all like very masculine signs on three of them. So it's about taking some form of action to materialize what's in the future for yourself. Maybe there's a lot of stuff energy up to this point in October. And you're trying to like, uh, because we have so many retrograde planets um, up to the first week in October. So you've been just kind of holding it in and try to make sense of uh, what has gone on before. And now in October, it's time to finally take that first step. Well, actually first of many steps forward. Yeah. Can we bring something? I, I would love to bring something else in a little bit because I think that will start to kind of... Um tie it together because remember guys we have uh, mercury also retrograde right now and where it's retrograde is in the sign of libra and when mercury is in libra in general already you're kind of um you're thinking all these kind of perspectives uh, co constantly i see this perspective i see this perspective and this to me also is adding to that pressure because it's like, oh, I can see this, I can see this, I can go here, I can do this. But like, what is the like specific thing I'm going to do? And when we add the kind of like the twist of retrograde again here on it, it's going to be even more re evaluation. It's going to be even more back and forth, even, even going to the past and kind of thinking, oh, this, that, this, that kind of back and forth game. But now when the retrogrades start to kind of, relieve that pressure cooker ease up you know? ease up yeah. <laughs> ease up is a good place then you know starting to make that um you know those decisions those those 
ideas that they're cooking, those perspectives that have been kind of churning, then it's kind of start, it's good, good time to start taking actions and, and, and ease, like Tony said, ease that pressure. I think the decisions will probably come in the second half of October, in which we'll cover in a bit. Yeah. Uh, because so far we talked about Pluto um, Station Direct, and then next one is Saturn. And then we've got two more in the second half of uh, mm -hmm. October. I think that will be the icing on the cake. <laughs> you know, all before we step into uh, November's eclipse season. <laughs> mm -hmm. That will yeah. be an interesting so, episode. <laughs> <laughs> so just know that uh, Venus moving into Sagittarius is not a mutual deception with Mars and Libra anymore. So... Um, uh, so Venus will be in higher ground, able to see the bigger picture, and will be probably attracting a lot of newer prospects to us as well. Yeah, because uh, Sagittarius is about something that's like newer, brighter, better days for us. And But we need to be more adventurous and look at the big picture, Sagittarius, in order to um, reap the benefits of uh, Venus's transit through the sign, which is a Jupiter road. And uh, let's move on one day later to 8th, good, good, of, good. Um, 8th of October. Okay. I just want to say maybe one last thing about yes. the Venus in Sagi is, is what I really like, you know, about this is, is you know, the, the Venus gets a bit hammered in, in Scorpio, like I said, and it's, it's a lot <laughs> to do with, you know, jealousy. and You're and very kind. kind of, yeah. Slightly, kind of like, slightly <laughs> hammered. <laughs> I'm kind of like dialing it down, but but like like them, like they're almost like Venus in in Scorpio. It can be very much like almost um, suspicious of things that aren't even there, and that can you know all, 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 always weigh on relationship. Let's let's say you've been very long in a relationship, and and maybe start to kind of think things are there that aren't really you know and then venus getting into sagittarius that kind of more optimistic kind of joyous so joyous way of being in relationships as well comes back and and with those lovely mostly lovely aspects i think it will be a relief uh, in our general relationships and mm -hmm. um Moving on to the 8th of uh, October, we have actually um, the asteroid series in Gemini that's uh, stationed. So series is where um, Ian is putting his cursor at. And series has been in um, Gemini for quite some weeks now. <clears throat> and then on the 8th of October, um, I shall call series a she because in mythology, uh, Ceres actually represents Demeter, which is Persephone's mother. And Ceres is all about, you know, um, things like agriculture, comfort, nurturing, um, all those things. And when, uh, and it's in the communicative idea-driven sign or information-driven sign of Gemini. So when Ceres actually stationed to go retrograde on 8th of October, um, it could be that... Basically, I need to explain just in short what series um, astrological movements is about. Is whatever sign that series is in is about defining how we provide support and offer care. And since it's in the sign of Gemini, it's really about um, nurturing others through conversation and communication, which is Gemini. And series' transit through the sign of Gemini is uh, it sees us actually taking our first tentative um, steps back out into the world and connect socially, which is Gemini, and um, braving interactions with strangers and co-workers after a lengthy period of isolation within our own bubbles, because, you know, we got a socially distance, right, for all this while. And it is not over this whole pandemic thing. So, uh, it kind of modifies series, uh, series um, transit through the sign of um, Gemini. And now when she's actually stationed, ready to go retrograde, 
uh, I don't want to put a dampener. <laughs> I think I've really mm -hmm. uh, put across a lot of uh, not so great news, but it seems to us that fostering that interaction with other people might be uh, changing directions. So in other words, we may be uh, uh, pushed to have more, um, pushed to socially distance from October onwards. This could be like, we are, bra we are, bra we are braving for um, end of the year, another wave is coming. This could be one of those. But I also want to mention that Gemini is also about uh, differences in opinions and viewpoints. And we have seen since series has entered the sign of Gemini that how many of us are quick to jump at people because they just express their viewpoints different from us. And Gemini is also the media and the media has been polarizing our uh, viewpoints of like uh, many, many things, which I shouldn't go into. I think all of us are experiencing like, you know, if you don't believe in A, uh, I got to shame you <laughs> yeah, definitely. over social media because you don't believe in, you know, because I've taken action A, this path down the road and you don't uh, uh, do as or agree with uh, what I put out there. And we see this polarization actually, um, um, I would say simmer down a bit as series actually station to go retrograde. It's almost like we are, we are taking, we are backtracking our steps of how we reacted to people who have different viewpoints than us. I think it deserves a mention, you know, um, in general, without, with or without astrology. I think like the, the extremes where we, we've been taking in, and then I think we, it's so easy to drop into those kind of uh, camps or, or like one yes. camp. And he, here is the, the more kind of mainstream camp of, of whatever you want to put there. And this is the other kind of alternative camp. And it's, for me, you know, I think Donnie, you know, associated with Ceres, I don't use personally Ceres that much in, in kind of a general astrology. In my mind, it's, it's, it's a lot to do with still the, the Uranus and the, the Saturn kind of square that's been ongoing mm -hmm. and those extremes that have been happening. And I want to share really quickly my kind of approach with this is, I, I, I tended to kind of drift into those extremes as well. And a lot of those extremes, um, why I, I drifted into those extremes was because I was scared. You know, I was literally that fear of like, like, if you don't do this, we will take this away from you. If you don't do this, we will do, you know, these kinds of... We can see in social media as well, if people say like, I've done this, I've taken this path down. And if other people express like, you know, uh, I'm, I'm of a different camp, than yours, then I'll automatically be like bickering with you, like comments after comments on social media. And then, oh, it's, but, it's but, like a whirlwind of things. Yeah. But, 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 but again, my, I think my point is still a lot of those extremes come from fear. So fear about, you know, your livelihood, the fear of you not being able to do your work, you know, then it's really easy if, if those things are already threatened here, then it's, it's kind of easy to go into that camp and let's start, you know, putting medicine into people or let's do that and let's, let's fix it really quickly. And everybody who opposes it, you know, sees the different view are kind of like vilified immediately. So my, my point is, I think a lot of that extremism is a lot to do with fear, fear about livelihood, fear about work, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And it, it's, it's a really important time to kind of, master feeling those fears being with those fears understanding and then from that kind of more grounded space start to interact with people and start finding solutions start finding you know smaller communities whatever it is that you will kind of um, conceive into the world i think will be be much better from you know when there's not so much immediate fear um kind of simmering there underneath I think because when whenever there's fear there's going to be attack uh, on, on one side of the camp yeah well i think because it's like series when it's in direct motion moving through um gemini and uh with it moving into gemini it actually crossed the north node as well in the process mm -hmm. also in early gemini so it's like the 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 
North Node or Rahu actually amplifies everything out of control. And, uh, and it really truly expands that uh, series's uh, energies for a bit. Mm. I think it was uh, back in late August, the third week of August when um, the North Node and series met at six degrees of Gemini back then. And then we can we can actually backtrack into like the energies back uh back way back when, uh, maybe honesty can be read as blunt or cutting. And um, there's a lot of chance for misinterpretation back then when North Node and series uh, was conjunct um, in late August in early Gemini, or it could be that well intentioned questioning. To question is to ask questions as Gemini can be misconstrued then because of that Rahu ampl uh, amplification. And um, Gemini is also something very changeable and very multifaceted and often erratic as well. So, from uh, probably August when Ceres entered Gemini all the way till now. Uh, with our minds are just scattered between multiple topics because the news has been just blasting up, down, left and right. And our minds have just got so much to catch up on that we can't really internalize. So uh, with this series finally station getting ready to go retrograde on 8th of October, we can probably, it's probably like a breather, I, I would call it, because um, uh, when series is retrograde, we are perhaps more willing to uh, witness others and allow them to tell their uh, life experiences and stories more. It's not as uh, um, 10,000 sources of information and then we've got to like know everything and our minds get just so frazzled because of it. And um, retrograde is also internalizing. So series going retrograde can help us to, or begin to internalize the variety of experiences and those around us have confronted over this pandemic life. And um, maybe it's time to go through some, some things that we have thought about um, doing that we want to um, slowly nurture and bring forth that brings us comfort. I've got a personal example. Uh, Gemini is something that's very short and quick, right? So I've been exploring how to use YouTube shorts, <laughs> which is very much series North Note in Gemini energy. And I'm going back to explore how it can be built into uh, my channels, my personal channels content in order to um, have wider outreach in the long run. Mm -hmm. This is one of those. And some yeah. of us might be like um, uh, taking this series uh, retrograde in Gemini energy to maybe learn new dances on TikTok. <laughs> It'd be one of those, you know, fun ones oh, yeah. to on. look at or um, study new languages that we've been kind of put off. Gemini is to learn something. Gemini is also languages as well, or uh, maybe rediscover some surprising passions that we have kind of, um, that will bring us comfort and joy, but we have not taken the steps to kind of go ahead and, and expand energy to, to, to explore that realm. Just, just a few things I want to uh, point out there. And mm -hmm. I must say that for the month of October, um, I also have the sense that we will get cozier, which is series's energy with other people's differences, including their difference of opinions as well. So it's actually a great time to kind of assimilate what we have fight others for. <laughs> in terms of differences, uh, differences in opinions and viewpoints and kind of bring together like a commonality or common denominator um, um, to have a common understanding, so to speak. 
you may be more drawn to asking thoughtful questions and framing responses uh, considerately as the best course of action, which I do recommend that uh, over this month. And um, I think the realization here is that we cannot force someone to learn something that they are not ready or willing to learn. And so it can bring, uh, we need to be more patient and there are aspects uh, in which series is forming in October that enable us to do just that. Uh, we also may realize that we should not belittle others if their choices or viewpoints diverge from our own. And therefore, like a constructive dialogue um, will become some sort of a healing practice, which is series, and conversation, which is Gemini, becomes like a medium that is restorative, which is series as well. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, in October, series will form certain aspects in the sky. And the first one uh, would be on the 3rd of October, um, in which Ceres will, still in direct motion, will try, and lib, uh, will try Mars and Libra. And this actually will help us be more patient, <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> because Mars and Libra is one that does not push its energy forward. When I think of Libra, I think of a round table. And this is how uh, Mars and Libra people run their energy. They go around in circles. But then mm. when they go around in circles, they can also um, <laughs> see things in a more holistic 360 degree view as well. So when series actually train Mars and Libra, uh, it can actually help us to be more patient um, ask something or rephrase your questions to be something more constructive, more considerate, more sensitive as well, more diplomatic, Libra, <laughs> uh, in order to know where they're coming from and not just jump to conclusions that, oh, since you're not, you know, agreeing with me in terms of my viewpoints and all that, that means you're wrong. It's very easy to go down that path. We don't need any more division, honestly. And um, our energy, which is Mars, can be expensed in terms of mutual understanding, in other words, because it's an air trine. It's about the understanding aspect. And Ceres will form an opposition to Venus on the 18th of uh, October. So you may want to, yes. So on the 18th, you can see um, Venus is at 11. Sag opposing series, which is already in retrograde motion. So series will form these two big uh, aspects, one with Mars and then one with Venus. Both are social planets. So I really hope what can come out of October is that there'll be more kind of less infighting within humanity <laughs> in terms of our viewpoints and there'll be more common understanding because October is also a month in which um, we are also finishing up a Mercury retrograde, which results in an extended square between Mercury and Pluto. <laughs> and it will finish up in the month of October as well, the last square. And so there'll be lots of um, insidious, coercive, manipulative information that's coming up. Something tells me that the truth will be revealed in the month of October. And then with this series, um, uh, series aspects to first Mars and then uh, Venus, I think we are in a good shape to uh, simmer down the kind of like, I hate you because you disagree with me kind of energy. <laughs> and we start trashing each other on Twitter, Facebook, and you name it. You know, there'll be more of like a, a, a larger and bigger picture understanding, I hope, with that. I really hope you're right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. I hope you're right, at least for momentarily. I, I just, for me, when I see the bigger picture, when I, especially when I bring in a little bit of bigger picture, I, I don't see it being that before the Uranus Saturn square finishes or moves into a sextile. I, I, I hope really you're correct and we will get these kind of windows where we can understand. And I mean, 
there's so much Libra and energy, you know, maybe we can see other people's perspectives more easily again, but then this Pluto square comes in and kind of smashes that to pieces. So uh, hopefully, hopefully that series uh, really helps us. I, I really yeah. do hope so. Because when I see series aspects first with Mars, then Venus, there's potential to reconciliate a lot of uh, inconsistencies and also erraticness coming from Gemini's energies as well mm. because we've got a balancing act of libra and then the bigger picture of sagittarius to go along with that so that's how i actually say what i said regarding that and on the 18th something interesting is going on we've got the third and fourth planet uh, in the month of october that's changing directions which are jupiter and also mercury as well so um they are happening literally like within um, 12 hours apart from each other. And the planet Jupiter will be the first to go direct. So Jupiter moving direct in Aquarius is really a good time to look for um, opinions and opportunities um, to take you into the future. So we've got Saturn in Aquarius turning direct just... Um, less than a week ago and now and now we've got jupiter turning direct as well in the same sign in um, aquarius so both are futuristic um well actually jupiter is more futuristic saturn is laying the foundations for that but they are both occurring in the sign of aquarius which which is very futuristic sign so we are laying down the foundations as we are able to see in the future what is in for us yeah I would like and, to say a little, uh, sorry, you had more. Yeah. Go ahead. So um, maybe you want to continue with uh, what's on your mind regarding Jupiter Direct? <laughs> yeah, I wanted to really, for a moment, uh, talk about Jupiter Direct here. Because remember, guys, we, we, we talked about Saturn Direct, and Saturn Direct is, or Saturn Retrograde even, is a lot to do with, you know, putting your hands on really materially and, and putting in the efforts. But Jupiter, okay, we're in kind of Aquarius here is still a very material, but still Jupiter. Like I've observed this very, very um, keenly, uh, let's say. And Jupiter really can bring those lucky things. And especially why I say keenly is during the retrograde, when it's coming out that, uh, like we said, week, uh, maybe two weeks, three, two days around the retrograde in the station, these are the moments where Jupiter really brings kind of these lucky opportunities. And when I say opportunities, these opportunities aren't always um, like, it, it doesn't mean Jupiter is going to immediately bring you everything, but it, it can be bringing you an opportunity that you need to take uh, advantage of. And then when we're talking about Aquarius, Saturn also there, it can be of, of a material kind of economic goal type of opportunity and you need to kind of take charge and you need to uh, take advantage of that opportunity as well and i'll give you a quick example of with this as well and one of those retrogrades with jupiter i had <clears throat> kind of like two years ago it was pretty pretty awesome and a, a, a weird weird one to share with you but uh, kind of like around two weeks before Jupiter came out retrograde, I started having these continuous thoughts of, of I need to start. I, I used to be a poker player. So I, I was like, I haven't played poker for in a while, but then Jupiter kind of started messing with me and I'm like, <laughs> there are other stuff going on, but it was like, you need to play poker. You need to be a poker. And I was kind of disregarding it at first, but then I remembered like Jupiter is coming out of retrograde. I need to take advantage of this. And also using my intuition um, during one of those days, very specifically, um, I, I was like, okay, okay, Jupiter, uh, I'll just kind of take your good graces and like test it out in the real world. And I just jumped into a tournament during, during one of those days. I, I had a really strong feeling I need to play this. And um, I happened to win it. <laughs> I happened to win the tournament. And if you, if you ever, ever have played poker not even professionally I just played poker um just you know how hard it is to win a poker tournament and i really made you know good 
um, let's take chances. And this is, I, I wanted to give you this example to kind of show you that this, it doesn't have to be poker. It, it can be something that is coming your way that you can kind of jump into and, and, and make, um, make use of. And then Jupiter can bring that luck or abundance, what, what I just shared to you as well, um, more easily to you than you than normally. Let's put it that way. Yeah, when I look at the chart of 18th of October, something interesting came up to me as well. Mars is at 21 degrees. Mm -hmm. Earth is trining Mars. Mm -hmm. Sun is not too far off, so Sun is also trining Jupiter. And they are all mm -hmm. sextiling Juno in uh, Sagittarius. Oh. So roughly to around the same degree. <laughs> when Ian was talking about, you know, the poker you know, the poker experience that, that he's uh, <laughs> surrendering into. Um, <laughs> Very well. I, I saw this minor grand shrine, which is like a, a shrine with two sextiles and the apex or the, uh, or, the, or the output point is Juno in the sign of Sagittarius. I somehow got the feeling that a lot of people were resigned from their current jobs. <laughs> hmm. Very interesting. Because they are relieving, uh, relieving like a commitment or work contract of sorts, which is like Juno's domain. And, um, uh, and also people who are in unhappy marriages might be doing something about resolving their situations around, around the third week of October as well. Because Juno is also the classic, um, uh, well, we call it asteroid, um, that represents like, you know, a commitment, like a marriage partner of sorts. So something interesting there happening um, on 18th of October. And also we can't leave out Mercury, which is like uh, less than 12 hours uh, after Jupiter turns direct, Mercury turns direct in the sign of Libra. And if you have been feeling out of sync with your network or neighborhood, which is Mercury's domain, uh, there may be some reconciliation. Or since Mercury is in a sign of Libra, retrograding since uh, late September, you've been weighing your options a lot regarding people around you. Uh, be it friends, loved ones, you know, co-workers, or even some work projects you've been assigned. And then when Mercury turns direct, there may be some kind of realization or certain conclusive decisions that you may come to, in which you may act on in the coming, um, coming weeks when uh, Mercury is approaching to form its last square with uh, Pluto. So some serious decision there. <laughs> oh yeah, I think, so. and especially when, when it's coming out of retrograde, you kind yeah. of finally feel that clarity or see that clarity in all after weighing all those perspectives just want to say one thing during the retrograde when mercury is, is still retrograde remember guys this is happening for everyone in, in, it's yeah. in libra so if a person goes like hey and this and that and maybe i want to do it i don't uh, blah 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 you know it goes back and forth with you remember this is more you know common to happen now during yeah. this Mercury retrograde because they are weighing those options. They are and, kind of like this and that, blah, blah, blah. And also the circumstance in which you're trying to resolve with this Mercury direct um, day on the 18th of, of October, the situation could have well been started over the Virgo new moon, I think in early September. Why do I say that? That is because when I relook back at um, that Virgo new moon, Mercury was also at 10 degrees of Libra <laughs> in his mm. shadow. Wow. And when we see where the sun is in terms of its position on 18th of October, it's at 25 Libra. That's where Venus was <laughs> mm -hmm. on, uh, I think, 5th or 6th of September, that Virgo new moon. And then Mars is pretty close to be sitting on top of 25 degrees of Libra as well. Um, so something that something that was seeded way back uh, in early September in terms of circumstances, it might lead to some kind of final decision making um, one month and three weeks later. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a conclusive 
thing that started way back in early September. This is what I got. Yeah. And also, uh, whatever decisions uh, that you make, you'll be blessed because 25 of Libra is where the fixed star speaker is. So that really helps to be blessed by the Arcturian <laughs> or the angelic realms that they, are, they have your back. And so if you're feeling fearful of making certain like drastic decisions on 18th of October, know that at some level, you are divinely guided through that constellation. Yeah, represented, or fixed star represented by 25 of Libra, which is speaker. Mm -hmm. Yep. And how about 23rd of October then, the next date, which is interesting. <laughs> This is where the sun enters Scorpio. Mm -hmm. And we are preparing for Halloween. <laughs> Coming eight days later. Um, but when the sun enters, Scorpio is really like, where the sun is transiting in terms of zodiac sign, is really where the spotlight is um, in that part of the year. And it's really about resource management, uh, Scorpio's domain. And Scorpio is really about trusting your instincts to guide you, especially in terms of um, um, financial matters. Mm -hmm. And the last date uh, of the month is the 30th of October. Mm -hmm. And this is where maybe you want to push one more hour ahead. Scorpio, wanna... uh, yeah, Mars actually enters Mars, Scorpio. Mm -hmm. Mars, Mars actually enters Scorpio, but Mars is still invisible, by the way, when, mm -hmm. when he actually ingresses into the sign of Scorpio. Um, when I think about Mars and Scorpio, because Mars actually rules Scorpio, so it's very strong in terms of uh, Mars's position. And... Um, I think the main thing I want to mention is let your actions, which is Mars, be guided by your gut instincts, which is Scorpio. And if something doesn't feel absolutely right for you, let it sit by the wayside and, and uh, don't do anything just yet until something feels right for you. Sometimes it boils down to timing, which is Mars. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think Mars and Scorpio really wants that before you take that action, I think research, research is good. Like even a sharper, maybe direct research is good doing before you take that action. Because then I think the action will be really good. You know, I, I always kind of put this uh, Mars Scorpio as, as a really good, you know, business strategist kind of kind of person, but it doesn't have to be business, but it's, it's a really, um, good position for for doing kind of like these strategic actions that have been researched right. i think this is i like i like this so this is a good time for this i think i missed but, out something uh maybe we can just backtrack a bit to 20th of um mm -hmm. Oba, because we've got a full moon in aries <laughs> oh yeah so it I'm happens at Mars. around 27 degrees of uh, Aries, that's where the full moon is. And mm -hmm. so um, I think in short, uh, if there's something that you've been intent on winning, it may come to fruition. So maybe if Ian, you want to have, you know, to enroll yourself into another poker yeah. tournament, maybe this full moon might bring something. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now Jupiter is is direct as well, so it can be. A yeah, I think easier. by twentieth of October, all four planets that we mentioned, which are Pluto, Saturn, Jupiter, and Mercury, they are all in direct motion. And then Mars, which is the ruler of that Aries moon, is approaching the fixed star speaker as well. <laughs> mm. Just one, I think we haven't mentioned one maybe quite important thing um, that is happening almost continuously throughout throughout, throughout the, the month, you know. Right. Um, 
maybe we should speak a little bit, at least a couple of sentences about this. Uh -huh. Because of, because when I was looking at this, I was like, oh yeah, sun, you know, sun conjunct Mars, which, which you know, I personally kind of love, but it's happening in the sign of Libra, which I don't really love for sun or um, Mars at all. So it, 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 uh, I do kind of feel this, this, um, theme of indecisiveness kind of uh continuing like it's like i want to take action especially with with career you know it can be with relationships here as well but i want to take action in my uh career and i kind of like do i do this do i do this can i do i do you know what in this direction or no when i see sun and mars especially in libra because when I see Sun, Mars, conjunct in Libra, there's almost like a sense of powerlessness as well because Mars is not functioning well um, in Libra, likewise for the Sun, because they both are more linked to the opposite sign of Aries a lot more. Um, but having said that, the ruler of Sun and Mars and Mercury too, um, particularly from... Um, particularly from 8th of, 7th of October onwards, um, it will be somewhat easier. That means the pressure cooker won't be as, as tough on people for the first six, six days in, um, first six days of October. Now, why do I say that? Because the ruler of Libra is Venus. And then Venus has moved on from Scorpio to Sagittarius from 7th of October onwards. And so even if we are trying to do that balancing act or that Tai Chi, because when I think of Mars and Libra, I always think of Tai Chi. <laughs> um, trying to weigh both sides of the coin, we can see the bigger picture from the 7th of October onwards when Venus enters formally into Sagittarius, um, that we will be able to um, go to higher ground and see the bigger scheme of things. And then the ruler <laughs> of Venus, which is Jupiter, will turn direct on the 18th of uh, October, like we mentioned earlier, uh, on the same day as Mercury as well. And so everything is almost like culminating or cumulatively uh, building up to the 18th of October energy. I think, it, I think that's an interesting place because look at this, what is, what is happening also here. Yeah you know, with the Pluto as well, because, yeah. you know, Sun is pretty, um, you know, exactly square. Um, Pluto Mars already separating, yes, well. but Mars is coming up. So it, it is, in my mind, it, it's like, a you know, still, you know, that pressure cooker can kind of reappear here for a second. And then, you know. Probably that's when we actually know, take action. And when, we, when we finally ex explode <laughs> here, you know, <laughs> I think this can be one of the areas like even with the Mars in Libra, even then the, the square from the Pluto can kind of agitate a little bit and that kind of maybe that aggressiveness of, of Mars can come out a bit there because it's so pressurized by, by Pluto there. Yeah. So why not we skip two days forward uh, to 20th of um October because all the four planets by this Aries um, full moon will have turned all direct already and moving forward slowly but surely. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and when I think about this uh, full moon in Aries, it's really about reigniting our inner warrior very much so. And um, Hmm. because it's happening in the late degrees of Aries. I mean, we've just uh, come back to a normal lunar cycle. I just want to mention this briefly. We've been, every time when the sun actually ingresses into a sign, the normal lunar cycle would be like a new moon in that sign where the sun is, and then followed by a full moon in the opposite sign. That's how the normal lunar flow should be or lunar rhythm. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been having the reverse actually. <laughs> for most of 2021 until we've gotten that double um, full moon in Aquarius. And now we are st slowly settling back into this normal lunar rhythm. 
uh, just like we are having it uh, in the month of October, we have a uh, we have a new moon in Libra first, followed by a full moon in the opposite sign of Aries. So, and Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. So we are almost like there's this new fresh energy that's coming in. Mm -hmm. I feel for the month of October. And um, maybe we're taking charge because Aries is like the sign of leadership skills, able to initiate things and begin new things and close partnerships. So we may be um, uh, feeling, more, feeling more of an energetic push to do just that over this full moon here. The interesting one is because the, the apex of the, this kind of like T-square is yeah. Pluto. So it is a lot to do with, you know, I would say like taking your power back, uh, most likely in relationships, in partnerships. It can come up, the actions initiative. that we take, I think because of that, that full moon highlighting that Mars and Pluto square, um, it may be out of paranoia, <laughs> um, attached to somewhat of our realizations. Um, mostly of a reactionary kind. But then um, courage and passion for taking action is also highlighted here. And with that Pluto and Mars square highlighted by this full moon, um, I won't lie, we will struggle with obstacles. But then uh, just know that there's a resourcefulness that's behind us. There's a huge sense of determination and bravery to push through whatever obstacles we're going to encounter. I just want to look at this kind of pressure cooker here in my mind. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I can't really see, especially during the full moon, um, there's got to be a lot of emotional reactions happening there, especially Aries, full moon, especially explosive and reactive um, moon anyway. And now it's agitated by, by a lot actually here by Mars and by um, Pluto. So I don't know, you know, uh, maybe some exercise, <laughs> but even that won't. I mean, if I were to maybe. summarize like, like October 2021, it is a very special month nonetheless because four planets will um, station direct them. And it's almost like I can think of planets that station direct after their uh, respective retrograde periods. It's almost like a person that has been kind of unwell and finally turning the corner in terms of their illness and then starting to regain their strength back. Although it's slow, but surely they do that. And with four planets actually changing direction in one month, and the dates are 6th of August, uh, so 6th of October, sorry, 10th of October and 18th of October, everything's jam-packed within that two-week time frame. Uh, we will sense such a huge notable shift in energy and forward momentum for the better, for, for the better at that time blessed by uh, Venus's ingress into Sagittarius for bigger and brighter days. Um, while the shifts themselves from retrograde to forward motion can be a bit disorienting, uh, perhaps also very intense because Pluto, uh, Pluto is involved in the four planets that's uh, turning directions, we will nonetheless see some developments in our lives. And uh, we are on the road to making some sort of progress forward. But then the, um, sometimes I feel that particularly going back to this full moon in Aries, the full moon highlighting that Pluto Mars square is needed to make us finally say, screw all of this, I'm gonna do it anyways. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I think, yeah, I, I'm thinking about our own kind of foundations and, and structures as well, I think. Yeah. There's, there needs to be some sort of decision action taken there with, with, because the release here is, is Pluto and, and kind of like um, powerful, powerful action towards 
power, I think powerful action towards your kind of solid foundations uh, mm -hmm. in life. Maybe career is, is here associate as well. Take take powerful action towards, towards so life plans, uh, longer term structures, um, relationships. All those might we need to be revamped within this um, this month because of the four planets in uh, that's in question that's turning directions to uh, yeah mm -hmm. so a very special month in short intense <laughs> month for action sure. act nonetheless for sure so um, do you have any auspicious dates? Mm -hmm. Let's start with the dates. Do, 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 do. Let's start with the days. Here it is. Can you see it? Yeah. So my first one that I picked here was the 15th. I do like the 15th a little bit here. Uh, I mean, I would say October isn't, you know, maybe because in my mind still... Sun and Mars are kind of weak or very weak, even right. we can say. So there aren't many like super auspicious states in my mind. There are bits and pieces here. So I, I did my best to kind of um, look at where we can find some optimism <laughs> more. <maybe. laughs> and this is one of the reasons here. Venus is already, and this actually, you know, last time we spoke about because, you know, Donnie usually uh, chooses time more specific to a, to a moment. And this, this time I did my best to do that as well. But also you can use these days for like general, you know, maybe a little bit better days. Let's, let's put it that way. I and mean, this, this time I put them, put the Venus on the ascendant. It's already in Sagittarius, nicely, you know, starting to make the sextiles. With, with the Libras and with the Aquarius ones and um, Moon. And now, Moon, I'm all about the Moon when picking up electionals a lot, a lot of the time. In this time, I'm not a big, huge fan of Moon and Aquarius, but in this case, we have Moon in conjunction and, and implying conjunction with the Jupiter. And it, it does, it decreases immediately that kind of optimism, but positivity of, of human beings and, and the emotional side. So already anything, you know, kind of um, in groups, you know, Aquarius can be quite good in public, could, quite good because still a trine to, to uh, the moon and, and Jupiter in Aquarius from the Libra sextile from, from the Venus. So I do like it uh, for, for two things. I mentioned one of those before, uh, making long-term plans yeah. with uh, your kind of like uh, counterpart relationship. It doesn't only have to be romantic, it can be business partner. Um, just one maybe kind of um, uh, words of caution, let's put, let's put it that way. Moon and Jupiter together maybe can be a little bit too optimistic, too overflowing. So keep an eye on that. And remember, Mercury during this time is still retrograde. So you kind of might need to rehash those things you discuss here a couple of times. Like, oh, maybe I'm saying this a little bit confusingly. Maybe I'm saying this a little bit confusingly. But generally, I do like this moment for, for these matters. And obviously, I think you can use it uh also for if you need to put something out there uh in in let's say a, a blog or, or an online kind of network or some kind of marketing strategy marketing yeah marketing is really good i think i, I particularly like this chart because moon just separated from a trine with mm -hmm. mars and then the next two aspects will be trining the sun and conjuncting jupiter mm -hmm which is that uh, Jupiter is a Venus's ruler. So it's about that longer term, um, maybe marketing strategies or advertising strategies that you've been working at or working on that you're trying to launch. And if, if you manage to do it really kind of like, um, you know, during the moment, you know, Venus is, is on the ascendant. So, you know, good things, you know, maybe even good feedback pleasurable more more enjoyable pleasurable feedback can come your way as well and or can be received a little bit better or you can put um, present yourself in a in a good venusian uh, light 
Okay. I think I got everything I wanted to say. I said that Sun, Mars squaring Pluto, but yeah, yeah. squares can also bring squares to Pluto on one hand, it can bring wealth as well, or, you know, tangible results. So it's not all bad. <laughs> Uh, it's not, yeah. I mean, I, I, obviously, every time with Pluto squares, I would, you know, caution that because Pluto is, especially we're talking about relationships, that um, the problem becomes usually power struggle. So when you're making those plans, maybe you're making those plans by yourself. Or maybe you just want to move on, you know. Maybe you want to move on. You know, that can be the case as well. Um, just, you know, Pluto can agitate that a little bit. For sure. Uh, now, if you're in, let's say, last thing about this, if you're in, let's say, you're not in a relationship and you're maybe um, weighing, again, with those Libra energies, weighing potential partners, this is a good time, you know, to weigh those options, I think, for a moment as well. So um, look at all the positives and negatives of those relationships and partnerships. Um, 18th of October, that's the first date I'm drawn to. And on the 18th of October, we've got um, this particular chart. And I have decided to go with an Aries rising. Um, because this will put Jupiter in its uh, own house of joy. Because Jupiter in ancient astrology really um, enjoy uh, being in the 11th house. And so this puts Aries on the rising sign. And one thing to note though, this is, um, this chart can only be employed in certain very specific uh, circumstances because the moon is at, is at 29 degrees of Pisces, which is a void of course moon. When I say void, of course, moon is because moon will not make any more aspects with any planets or points in the chart until it changes sign uh, into Aries. And I just want to say, I think in one of the videos we did previously yes. that's free on our channels is also we discuss or dissect the void, of course, moon in, in more detail. So go, go and check that as well. Yes, I think that's back in um, August. August... Uh, August video and it's the void of course moon here is really uh, putting the final finishing touches uh, to projects that has already begun so you're just kind of completing it that's what this uh, void of course moon is good for um, void of course moon is also good for taking stock of things um, making to-do list and uh, finding lost objects very appropriate for moon and Pisces and mm -hmm. it's also very good for editing, refining, and reviewing things. Um, Void of course, Moon is also very good for social events with uh, uh, friends that you have established a long uh, relationship with, or um, maybe it's family members that you want to bond with. It will be very good to uh, to um, get to get together with them over this Void of course uh, um, electional chart. And last but not least, I've put the moon in the 12th house um, because it's good for rest and relax. If you want a period of good sleep, like a good nap, <laughs> it may be very good for that. And you will be tuning into um, the more peaceful realms or it may be a good time for you to engage that spa treatment. 12th house is also ruling the feet. And I've been doing a lot of Epsom, Epsom salt foot baths. So nice. it may be very good for that just to help you to discharge certain uh, buildup of psychic energies that's within you. Because October, honestly, it's, it's quite a powerful month to begin with. And there's a whole lot of energy shifts and we, we are just all trying to like get through the month as it leans into eclipse season. And last but not wow. least, um, 12 houses, uh, uh, getting rid of something like losses. So you may be also like, uh, maybe you want to uh, get rid of any excess things in your cupboard. <laughs> or want to clean up your house, your bathroom, for example. 12 houses, bathroom, Pisces. 
and uh, your bathroom may be cluttered with a whole bunch of products that you don't use. And you may take this personal chart to, um, to also take care of plumbing issues. <laughs> Very specific. Nice. You know, maybe your sink is a bit spoiled or your, you know, your, your toilet bowl is a bit like whack and you need to like, you know, clean it up and all that, descale it. You know, it may be something as trivial as that or maybe something like, you know, uh, because it. Neptune is also there. It can be like, this Neptune is also leaked. So any leakages in your bathroom, you may want to fix it. That's, that's, what, that's what I've gotten. And Even uh, overflowing water or too much water, like anything kind of flowing or uh, what's the what's the word I'm looking for? Clog, clogging. Uh, also when, yeah. yeah, yeah, Neptune. Yeah. So uh, maybe you want to engage a plumber. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a weekday, it's a Monday, at least in Singapore, but in other parts, most parts of the world, it's, it's, it's on a Monday, so... Um, and also some like creative projects, you're trying to finish off a creative projects and putting the finishing touches to it. So it may be good for that. And um, Moon and Neptune in the 12th house in Pisces is also about going into introspection to bring out deep buried emotions as well. It's, it's very good for, uh, to, to maybe connect to poetry, Pisces. Uh, listen to some sad songs that have a good cry. Maybe that's your, maybe that's a jig. Um, <laughs> And um, I have one. What about yeah. what about uh, what about seeing a mentor, friend, or mentor kind of figure, one on one, yeah, to this kind of discuss high long term goals and yeah. maybe heal some uh, subconscious things. Oh yeah, because that's <laughs> also why I've put like Venus in the ninth house. Yeah, <laughs> like that. yeah, and is ruled by Jupiter, which is already stationed direct in the eleventh. Mm -hmm. So it could be like a friend who you can talk to regarding like, okay, like how can I see the bigger picture of this relationship or this um, personal goalpost of mine? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you have some useful advice that may come through. And um, it's also very good for uncovering how you feel about someone and how they feel about you. Where do you stand in this? Um, maybe have a good talk with your partner or someone that you've been rethinking the relationship about, whether you and this person, um, how do you move forward from existing circumstances? And this date can be very good for evolving that relationship dy dynamic forward, or um, if things are not um, align with your future ideals, what you have about this relationship, then maybe you need to move on. This chart is also pretty good for like moving on from some relationships as well. Um, this can also be very good if you are suffering from some kinds of addic uh, uh, addiction that uh, you're not aware of the root cause because that moon and Neptune in the 12th house and with that Venus and Jupiter that Ian has pointed out, in those respective houses, 9th and uh, 11th house. And Venus actually rules um, Sun and Mars uh, in the 7th. So this chart altogether, I would say, is very good for getting down to the root cause of any forms of bad habit or addic uh, addictive um, behavior that you might have. Um, mentioned earlier about something regarding leakages in the bathroom. <laughs> mm -hmm. issues um, oh yeah psychological depths uh, can be uncovered here um, maybe you are wanting to go to go into automatic writing this can be a very good chart for that as well because you've got a 9th, 11th, 12th house pretty strong and those maybe you want to train your um uh, Claire audience skills <laughs> and this is a good chart for that if you want to sit down and just like just not overthink it and just start writing things and this can be a very good chart for channeling in the aspect as well so um, so the particular uses it can be used for I'll just go through this quickly finishing touches to a project 
that you've been wanting to complete, creative or otherwise, before publishing or presenting it to the world? Analyzing the pros and cons regarding a wealth or financial or investment decision. This can be another one. Consulting someone for potential career change or relationship uh, analysis. Um, and perhaps my favorite one. And perhaps Just making the, favorite. Yeah. And making the necessary list of things to consider to do just so. Uh, it's also a good time to get psychological insights. Um, in order to perhaps break a, uh, an addictive behavior or a very bad habit. And uh, leakages, leakage checks in the bathroom. <laughs> and also, <laughs> um, last but not least, relationship decisions may come to the forefront for you to decide whether you want to stay or move on. So these are all from my side. October people, no joke. <laughs> it's no, no joke. joke. It's no joke. But I just want to say, yeah, go ahead. I just want to say that both the full and new moon, in some way, shape, or form, um, it highlights Mars, Pluto, and Chiron, these three bodies. And if I were to mush all these three together, October is really about intensified actions to the point of experiencing breakthroughs and transformations in the process. Uh, you can turn that anger that's been building inside of you into positive and constructive action. But what we mentioned in this um, session is that uh, it manifests in different ways. And uh, one, of, one of the other levels that it can manifest is that you realize what in your life that needs to be destroyed to move forward. And this can be relationships or some hopes and dreams or um, um, this can be leaving a job that you really hate for quite some time now, but you're too afraid to move on. Um, overall, there are stresses that's around to act uh, on extremely intense impulses. That's one of the, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's there's so much that I love. I love that retrogrades are coming, becoming straight, direct. Um, I don't like the. In I guess I don't like the intensity of the full moon. I think, or you know, I, I would love it if we as humans would be a bit, you know, better at channeling our emotions and feelings. I think we're not there yet, but I think it will be a good place to kind of practice it <laughs> um but just be i guess a little bit careful during that full moon i think it's a, it's a quite an action both uh moons are actually in you know cardinal signs action packed with those mars okay a little bit weakened but um you know take action break through things will you know finally start moving forwards yeah it's it's all about Aries and Libra, right? Me versus you, you versus me. So it's like what I want, Aries, versus what we want, Libra, or how you actually connect with the world, which is also Libra's energy. Very well. Good so, luck, guys, for October. <laughs> yeah. So next month, November, we'll be stepping into eclipse energy. So it'll be interesting. The 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 first eclipse along the Taurus Scorpio axis. Yeah. Thank you very much for listening. And, yeah. Um, see you soon. See you soon.